Hello. So, words, not words am I looking for, I'm looking for words to start this video. Okay. So, yesterday I suffered with a panic attack. I've made a video before on this channel about the fact that I suffer with panic attacks. But yesterday's one was like, I mean they're all pretty bad, but yesterday's one was pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> so, the day after, today. I've been thinking about what I did to calm myself down after experiencing the panic attack and feel that it'd be good for myself or potentially anyone else to kind of hear some of these tips or things that I did that could potentially help them or remind me in future to do so. If I'm watching this in future, Coral, this helped you yesterday. Do it again today. One of the first things I would recommend is listening to calm music or music that is quite comforting to you after you've had a panic attack. It can be a hard one because I don't think it's about blocking out your thoughts because your brain is probably going a million miles an hour still. But it's kind of going towards something that was comfortable to you that made you feel, or in the past has made you feel quite like calm and relaxed and like nothing bad in the world can happen. And so I'd recommend putting on calm music me, I go between listening to kind music and listening to Ajahn Brahm. Like yesterday I listened to a talk I did on panic attacks, which was very helpful. But then I also listened to the scene aesthetic, so that was kind of like a combination that made me feel a lot calmer and better. Another thing I'd recommend is drinking chamomile tea. This might just be me. But to me, chamomile tea is always the drink I have before bed when it's like really nice and soothing and calm. And I think just the warmth of it is like a bit of a, like a hug in a cup. <laughs> Have a drink because it's not like it's coffee so it's going to get you too overstimulated but it's just got some good stuff in it so i definitely recommend it or perhaps like um a lemon and ginger tea as well would be a good one i think because the ginger is really good for you the lemons a good amount of citrus should make you feel a bit more like Ooh. cooking or eating food that is good for your body i found that very helpful Oftentimes in the past when I've had a panic attack, I've just not eaten afterwards because I've just been like, oh, I feel too sick, I feel too overwhelmed, blah, blah, blah. But yesterday I was like, okay, what what can I do that normally makes my body feel good or makes me feel like I'm taking care of myself and kind of puts me first? And that is eating and cooking good food. And so yesterday after my panic attack, I kind of came back home and I was like, okay. I sat down and I cooked myself some rice, some sweet potato and onions and chopped tomatoes and peppers and some seasonings and I think in that moment if you can look after yourself and you can do something that is like simple but helpful to you, it kind of helps you get back on track and kind of takes you out of that panic state I think and it's like okay this is what I normally do, this is my normal comforting routine and that's good. Drink lots of water. Yesterday I was just like, water, 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 because I felt so thirsty after all my crying and all that and I think it's really important to rehydrate your body, especially when it's just been through something so traumatic. It's something I've often forgotten in the past and then I've kind of kept up with my feelings of nausea. But it was actually really helpful to me yesterday to just sit there and drink water and kind of help clear through my system, especially when you've got like a blocked nose and your face feels all kind of swollen and you've been like, uh, it's really good to rehydrate your body and basically what your body's made up of so much water. So when your body's been through some shit, put water in it. <laughs> got a headache, drink water. Dehydrated, drink water. Having a normal day out, drink water. Panic attack, drink water. <laughs> Lying down. I didn't want to lie down yesterday because I was like, no, I need to stand, I need to walk off this energy, blah, blah, blah. And then it kind of hit me and I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> it's okay to lie down. It's okay if you lie down and you feel a bit sick and you feel a bit restless and a bit kind of like, oh. But actually lying down did really help calm me down eventually because I was like, okay. This is all I'm going to focus on doing right now. All I'm going to focus on is lying down. I can do that. And it was like a very easy task for me to complete and kind of feel calm with. And just kind of like staring at my ceiling and my ceiling's like white with just a few lights on it. It was like, okay, that was the only information I needed to take in. 
and my brain was just like, oh, thank you, this is helpful, this is so much simpler than, you know, doing blah, 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 and trying to distract yourself from the fact that you've been through such trauma. Giving yourself time before committing to any other action is really important. And this is something that I think could have potentially stopped my panic attack yesterday. My panic attack was brought on by receiving a certain message from someone and then not giving myself appropriate time to deal with it before going to something else that I was anxious about doing. Like deep down, I know that was the worst thing I could have done, but at the time I was like, well, you weren't expecting to see that and you've agreed to go here and blah, blah, blah. And I wasn't putting myself first. I wasn't going, okay, well, maybe I should delay that second thing or maybe, you know, just maybe I should do something differently. In that moment, I was like, well, yeah, but blah, blah, blah. You should just deal with your mental health, you know, just work through it, just ignore it, just ignore it. And the last time I tried to ignore my anxiety like that, I had a panic attack. And I made a video about it because I wasn't putting myself first. I was... I wasn't looking at what was in front of my mind and that's something Ajahn Brahm talks about a lot is what's the most important thing right now and it is what is in front of your mind. So if you're tired and you have the opportunity to sleep, sleep. If you feel ill and you feel unable to go to work, don't go to work, don't put yourself through it. If you have an anxious situation, give it the appropriate amount of attention. Don't just go, I haven't got time for you. And it was the same kind of after the panic attack saying to myself, okay, I know I need to buy groceries for today's dinner, but rather than just kind of going, okay, well, I'm going to go and buy groceries, it was like, okay, I'm just going to sit and do nothing or listen to calming music or cook some food. And then later on, I can reassess when I've calmed down, whether I'm going to go to Tesco, whether I'm going to go here and get this, this, this. Because too often we place pressure on ourselves to just be back to normal straight away. And our body has been through something that it doesn't go through all the time. It's not that easy to deal with. And so giving yourself that time where you don't commit to anything else and you go, okay, right now I am going to live moment to moment rather than, oh, I've got to do this or I've got to do this or I've got to do this. Kind of just going, no, the world stops right now. And that is okay. Another thing I do to calm down after having a panic attack is just trying to remind myself to accept the fact that I do have panic attacks. I think it can be a hard thing with mental health because sometimes without even realising I feel a bit of shame over it and I just feel like, well no one else is having a panic attack here, no one else is depressed, no one else is this, 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 why can't I just be and I put all this additional pressure on myself to be different when I need to actually accept and love myself for the fact that I deal with these things. It's, this is another thing that Ajahn Brahm says, he says, you can't always cure your mind, but you can care for it. And quite often I forget that, but yesterday I was like, no, okay, I can't cure my mind. I can't cure the fact that I suffer with panic attacks. I can't cure my panic attacks, but I can try and care for my mind. And if I can try and care for my mind, hopefully next time I will be in a position where I can better deal with the panic attacks or I can understand the symptoms that I'm experiencing before getting the panic attack and perhaps... Not try and stop the panic attack, but understand it more so that hopefully I won't have such a severe experience. And the last thing that I had to tell myself yesterday, and I definitely recommend it to anyone, after having a panic attack, don't try to over assess the situation. Because it's very easy to sit there and go, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Was it because of this? Was it because of this? Was it because of this? And when really we need to just let it go. Because yesterday I'd kind of let it go and I'd, I'd calmed down significantly and then eventually I'd gone to Tesco and I was like, okay, I'm feeling normal, I'm feeling fine, I'm feeling okay. And then I started to make dinner and my brain started to be like, well, why did it happen? Why this? And my brain started to go through the steps of what had happened beforehand. And by doing that, I started to get really overwhelmed again and I started to get the kind of rumbling in me and I was like, no, I was like, <laughs> I'm literally making myself go through the thought pattern that I had not so long ago that caused the panic attack. That's the worst thing I can do. So I kind of sat down and I managed to calm down again. But that was just a re-reminder of not trying to figure it out in that moment. Like today I can think of it a lot clearer and my body does not go into that phase again straight away. But yesterday I had not calmed down enough to then be like, right, gotta figure this out. And so... These are just a few things I recommend to myself or to anyone else.
listen to some kind of calming music or certain sounds if they put you into a happy place. Like if you like bird sounds or just anything, if you like the Star Trek theme song and it makes you feel better, go for it because, you know, it's only going to comfort you or make no difference at all, so it's not going to make it feel worse. <laughs> if you can, eat food that is good for your body. Eat food that doesn't reset that doesn't upset your stomach or isn't like too fatty or too heavy or anything like that. Eat something that you can eat and then just kind of be like, okay, I fed myself, I've looked after myself. That is good. Drink lots of water or like hydrate yourself, do what you can. Because if you're like me and you have panic attacks where you cry a lot and where you kind of get really out of breath and you kind of really like, get really like, <sighs> The best thing you can do, or one of the best things you can do, is drink a lot of water to feel better and to kind of get back that liquid that you lost. Lying down. Letting yourself be okay with lying down and just trying to be calm. Not even trying to be calm, but just kind of lying down and accepting that even if your mind is still racing, even if you still feel sick, even if you feel like you should be walking around and doing this, 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 and apologising to this, this, this person, that it's okay just to stop, lie down, and that is all you're doing in that moment. Giving yourself time before committing to any other action. Whether you need to grocery shop or this or this or this, all those needs are no longer what you need in that moment. Like going to Tesco and buying the groceries isn't going to make you feel better than sitting and taking time for yourself. Accepting that you suffer with panic attacks and that your mental health is perhaps something that will vary from time to time, but that that's okay. It's how you're built. You've got to love yourself, you know? You've got to go, okay, well, this is who I am and I shouldn't be ashamed of who I am because I'm not ashamed of anyone else who suffers with these issues. Like, I don't look at anyone else that's got mental health issues and I don't look at them and go, oh, you should just get on with your job or you should just this. Like, the only criticism I'm hearing it's from myself about myself. And something, again, as Jean Brahm says is, why do we look at moments in our past as a prosecutor? Why do we look at ourselves and go, no, no, no. Why don't we look at ourselves as a defender? Why don't we try and like get ourselves off and go, oh, no, there's compassion. Why can we not be friends with our past instead of the opposite of friends, non-friends? <laughs> And last, don't try to overassess the situation. Just let it be. Try and let it go. And eventually you'll feel better. Put your health first, always.